for those of you guys who don't know what a cut crease is, a cut crease is when you have two colors and there's a sharp hard line and it's not blended. So hence the word cut and, and it's in your crease. For those of you guys who have hooded eyes, the thing about you guys is you're going to have to do it in your fake crease, um, meaning it the cut part of it should be slightly above your regular crease just a little bit just so you have a little bit more eye space to work with so that's just a tip for those of you guys who have hooded eyes of course when you open your eyes a lot of the color is going to disappear but that is still how you work it on out Exactly. You should do everything. What's up, Jennifer? Yeah, you should do everything in your fake cut crease if you have red eyes. All right, so I'm going to get started. I'm working out of a few different palettes. Whenever I do br bright colors, nine times out of ten, I use the Urban Decay Electric Palette because it's just my favorite go-to for bright colors. If you guys haven't seen it yet, this is what the inside looks like. And I'm actually using this color right here, which is called Thrash. And I'm going to be using the browns and blacks out of this palette here. And this is the Kat Von D Monarch palette. So that's pretty much the gist of that. Like I said, I've done my foundation routine already, but I have not finished the rest of this eye. There's more to do with this eye. This palette is worth the money. I think it's $54, but it's worth it. The colors are truly pigmented. Sometimes when you get to bright, vibrant colors, uh, the colors, it takes a while to build up the vibrancy of them. But with this palette, you can do like one or two coats and you're good to go. Yes, the Urban Decay palette. Good morning, Paige. So starting off first, I am going to do my base. Um, thank you. Um, so my base is this right here. It, I made it using my Makeup Forever Flash Palette. Now, the thing is, uh, praise God for increase in new jobs and new checks. Go ahead, Chloe. Um, so this is the base that I'm using just to make this bright color pop even more. If you don't have something this color, you can still use... Uh, um, hold on, Dominique, I'm going to answer that question in a second. You can use a gel eyeliner that is similar in the greenish family or yellow family to make the colors pop. Um, let me see. Or you can use a white base to get that, to make the color pop even more. The Urban Decay Vibrancy versus ColourPop's Vibrancy, I would say they're the same. However, I feel like Urban Decay is easier to put on because of the consistency of ColourPop. It takes me a little bit um, more time to like spread it around. So I, I wouldn't say one is better than the other. All right, so I am going to put this on my entire lid. And I'm making sure to just spread it evenly. And then as I'm getting towards the crease, I'm starting to create my sharp line. So this is the only time that I'm not trying to blend. So I created my crease line. If you are trying this and you're struggling getting a perfect line, don't worry because you're going to go ahead and fix that when you do this next step and also when you um, put the brown or your transition color. Now I'm using this pencil. This is from LA Girl and it's just a, their dark brown pencil and I'm going to go ahead and end the crease start creating my line so as I'm doing this I am trying to be careful but again you can always go back and fix it but 
the line doesn't have to be super thick but you want enough space to kind of blend out the top part of the line does not have to be perfect because you're going to blend that out anyway and I did bring this in on the other eye but I blended it into the color because I didn't want to close it up anymore and because I did on this side I have to do the same thing on the opposite side alright once that's done it's time to blend I'm using the Morphe M3 Morphe 335 brush buffering brush to kind of blend the top only yes this is a brown pencil but it's a really dark brown Alright, so I'm just buffering the top. Hey Chloe, did you ever get your get a buffering brush or blending brushes that were smaller? Okay, then I'm gonna take a small smaller blending brush. And I'm just going to blend out the top. And notice that I'm leaving the bottom half alone. Okay, cool. Let me know how it works for you. And let me blend that outer corner really quick. So I'm blending this outer corner that I closed up right in here. Um, oh, okay, good. Let me know exactly if it worked out for you. Because I know that is a, a struggle. And as I'm blending this gel, it's like a cream gel eyeliner, it is a little bit harder to blend. It takes a little bit more work to blend. Okay, after I do that, go into the Monarch. Oh my gosh, this thing is like breaking. Okay. So after I do that, the next step is to take the dark brown in the Monarch palette. I would lift it up so you guys can see, but one of my eyeshadows are breaking, so I can't lift it up right now. And I'm taking a dark brown tone, and I'm just going over the top of the brown eyeliner pencil. And trying to blend it out even more then moving on to the buffering brush again taking a lighter brown tone and just blending out the brown oh yes Chloe and I forgot to tell you I got the look that you want to learn so we I will do that next week All right, just checking the balance, making sure everything is nice and even. And with the lighter brown, just blending that even more. And without any product on my brush, actually I'm gonna use my finger. And just blend that down from my eyebrow whenever I do like cut creases like this I always get product all the way to my eyebrow and then I just wipe it off because that is not cute all right so after that it is time to move on to the vibrant color so with the vibrant color I'm just gonna use the brush that comes Yeah, it is more of a cat eye. And once everything is all put together, you'll see the cat eye on both sides. Nope, it is more of a cat eye once it's all set. Okay, so using the brown, or not the brown, using the bright tone thrash in the Urban Decay palette, 
you are now just going to pat over the entire lid where you did the base color and this time you're making sure that you stay and you're kind of perfecting that crease major church lady brush that is funny that is like one of my fears it's very shameful it's terrible I see it all the time I just want to blend it in a little bit you know All right, so notice as I get closer to the brown, where the bright, vibrant tone meets the brown, I am gently following the shape that I've already created and making sure that I don't blend the two and kind of muddy up that line and blur it. I think I like that vibrancy. Right after that is done, the next step is to take like a stiff flat brush. So I'm using the Morphe E10 and only on one side of the brush. So I'm going to put the dark brown on one side of the brush and the tip of the brush, leaving the other side bare with nothing on it. And the reason why is I'm just going to go in and define that cut crease even more. So following the line that I've already made, I'm just cleaning up the cut crease just a bit more. So what this is doing is it is making, like it's cleaning it up and it's blending in the top, like it's kind of blurring out the top, but then it's keeping it sharp on the bottom half of the brush by not having any product on there. All right, when that is done, I'm going to do the cat eye. And then after the cat eye, I'm going to do the bottom half of the eye. So, you guys know how it goes when it's time for the cat eye. It's time to be quiet. And comment, yes, yeah, so, <clears throat> where's the stiffer? Okay, so on this side of the brush is where I added the eyeshadow and then and on the tip of the brush but then on this side right here there was nothing and so the empty part what the reason why you don't put eyeshadow on this part is because you don't want to blur your sharp crease into the vibrant tone right you want to make sure that it stays as is and it stays a sharp line so that is why you put product on here the eyeshadow and a little bit on the tip because when you put let me show you something. When you put the brush against your eye, you're actually using just the tip of it and creating a sharp line. So what I'm doing is I'm blending the top part but making sure that the bottom stays sharp. Hopefully that makes sense so that this on top is blended and this is sharp. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Shoot, what did I do with my brushes? Don't be scared of color. Um, just gradually introduce it into your regular makeup routine, you know? Try color only on the weekends. And do pops of color. Alright, I'm going to do my cut crease first before I do the bottom. Starting from the cut crease, I'm going to do my wing liner. And if you're doing this and it ended up being more of a rounded look, because when I did this, I did not, I wasn't super careful about the shape, but when I clean it up, then you'll see how it becomes more of a cat eye look. Um, I would say yes. Play with color. Why not?
Right. That's why I'm able to play with color a lot more because I wear all black all the time for work. So I don't really have to think about what matches and what doesn't until Sunday. All right. All right, next step is to go over it with a black liquid eyeliner. I'm going to put on my bottom, not my bottom, my top lashes. And after I put on my top lashes, we're going to I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do on the bottom. Okay, so after I've done that, I'm going to take, when I find my brush, the brush that I used for my, did I use glue? Uh, glue for what? I lost it. Or was that a question to someone else? Oh. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of concealer and clean up the wing liner. What that does is it's going to clean up any eyeshadow that went below your wing liner and sharpen up your wing as well. Alright, now it's the last time and let's keep it going. Okay, so I just ordered some lashes from Coco Lashes. This is the first time, you guys, I have ever spent more than $1.99 on lashes. So the lashes from Coco Lashes range. They're like, I think the lashes are go from $8.99 all the way to down to $1.99. So I bought a ton. Well, not a ton, like three pairs of lashes for $8. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's kind of expensive. But I'm, I wanted to try them out because they're handmade. And I want to see what the difference is. Like, why are people buying lashes for, you know, uh, $8 and up? I went to a makeup store and lashes were, I saw lashes for like 36 bucks. And I'm just kind of like, for that amount of money, the lashes should be able to put themselves on, you know? I'm just, I was just kind of like, I'm not buying no 30, $30 lashes. I know, three pairs of lashes for that amount of money is kind of expensive. Ugh. I don't know why I keep doing that this week. But um, I just really wanted to try them on. Everyone's like, I wanted to try them because a lot of my fellow makeup friends are like, um, oh, try these lashes. They're better. They last longer. You can get 25, 25 uh, pairs of lashes, blah, blah, blah. Or not 25, 25 wears out of them. So, we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted. I bought lashes from Coco Lashes, and then the next one I want to buy is from, I can't think of the name. Alright, let me try this again, because I'm over here messing up, putting on my lashes.
Alright. The easiest way. Oh, hey, Valerie. I didn't even know you were on here. Oh, my gosh. I'm struggling this morning with the lashes. The easiest way to put on your lashes, I think, is using tweezers and then making sure that there's a thin layer of glue on the lashes. And after you do that, let it get slightly tacky and then start from the center and tuck in the corners. Sounds like a lot of steps, but it is the easiest way to put your lashes on. And I think my tweezers have something on them. That's why it's taking longer to put them on because I keep, like, picking them up. No, these aren't the $8 ones. Um, those ones should be coming in the mail shortly. When they do, you guys will know. Because I'm going to show you guys. All right, now I'm just taking a little bit of uh, mascara and marrying my lashes into the falsies. And let's finish with the bottom. Yeah, these are my regular, uh, I think these are 415s from Stardell Lash. So these are my regular 199 ones. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chloe. All right, so for the bottom, we're going to start with a black eyeliner going into the waterline. And then after I do that, I'm just going to go a little bit under the waterline. Now, honestly, you guys could stop right there if you wanted to, but I want to do a little bit more non-existent. Lashes really complete your makeup look. Gotta keep trying, Jennifer. Because yesterday, for the first time in a long time, uh, I decided not to wear lashes. And I felt like <clears throat> my makeup look was not it. Alright, after that... I'm going to take a small blending brush and I'm going to blend out what I just put on right there. Yeah, this is the the eyeliner, it's an eyeliner gel pencil and that was called Very Black from LA Girl. And it does, again, take a while to blend it out. Like, because it's gel, it does, you got to work a little bit harder. What type of um, eyeliner are you using, Dominique? Is it liquid in your waterline or is it one that smudges mixed gel liner? Because sometimes the eyeliners that smudge can um, can run all over the place, like especially if you have a, a watery eye. Uh, one of the things you should do is make sure that you get a smudge proof eyeliner, number one, or two, oh my gosh, I'm so mad that this has broken. Um, what was I going to say? Or two, you may be too far in your waterline. Now I'm taking brown and I'm going underneath the black that I just put on. And smudging it out even more. And what I'm creating is really like almost a smoky eye at the bottom. Just not super dramatic. 
So instead of setting the black gel liner with black, I'm using the really, really dark color that I used in the cut crease. And it's in the Monarch palette and I can't lift it up because my Monarch palette is breaking. Thanks, Chloe. All right, and without putting any product, I'm gonna take my buffering brush, the uh, M335 from Morphe. And just doing back and forth windshield wiper motion. And now I'm going to take this brush right here from Coastal Scents and I'm just going to set the black j right underneath the waterline. I'm setting it with a black eyeshadow. And I'm just tapping just underneath it. All right, so that is the eye look. Now for the blush, I'm going with Fever by MAC. If you have new lows by Color Pop, that works as well. But I wanted to keep it, um, I wanted like a plum-ish tone. Thank you. Thank you for the time check. Go ahead, working and watching. That's what a lot of people have to do. All right, now using a fluffy brush, I am just going to blend that out even more. Oh, just what you did. Catch the replay. All right, then using matte gold deposit, I'm taking my new fan brush. Uh, yeah, no, actually, this was my Kirkland uh, brush, the brush that I have from Costco. This brush is from Morphe. This is the M310. Uh, this is a fan brush, but it's more dense than the one I normally use, so it picks up more product. Because I wanted to find a brush that picks up just a little bit more of the gold deposit when I do my highlighters because I feel like I'm constantly building and building. Yeah, this is a Morphe brush. I think this brush was like $8. And I'm just going to put a little bit more blush because I feel like I wiped, I blended some of that away. No, not any, not all retailers sell Morphe. Um, 
I would say, because I think you're in Texas, um, I would say you would probably have to go on their website and see because they're more of a, um, they're like right between high end and inexpensive. So, oh, you're in Philly. Okay, so they're right between high end and inexpensive. So you may have to order online or there may be like a certain type of store, beauty supply that has it. All right, so this is the wake up to makeup look for today. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Chloe. I'm going to talk about that. This is called a cut crease. What a cut crease is for those of you guys. For those of you guys who don't know, a cut crease is where it is where the two colors meet, and there's a sharp line that is in your crease, and it is not blended. So that is what a cut crease is. For the lips today, it is going to be a neutral tone because there's a lot going on with the eyes, especially with my red hair. You don't want everything competing on your face. So if you do a vibrant color, nine times out of 10, you should keep it in the neutral family. It could be a neutral pink, a neutral nude, a neutral coral tone, but it should mostly be uh, neutral. So let's fast forward to Love Yourself Gab Fest. I hope you guys have your tickets. I would love for you guys to be there so I can meet with you guys, talk to you guys, all that good stuff. Tickets are 43 something because if you buy, buy them on Eventbrite, which is the only way you can buy them, um, it adds a 300, a $300, $3.19 charge. So the tickets are $40. It's the early bird special right now. So be sure to get your ticket. Um, and it is in Atlanta and it's August 6th. Yeah, August 6th. We're going to be doing a blab soon with all the ladies coming together and hanging out. And that's where you go get them. Love yourself. Gabfest.eventbrite.com. Thank you, Chloe. <clears throat> So if you haven't got your ticket, be sure to do that. We have some tickets available still. And we really, really, really want you guys to, you know, attend, hang out with us. And we have a lot of fun things in store with you guys. So as Chloe's saying, she I feel like you know more than me, Chloe. She's just so on it. Um, as I was saying, just make sure that you get them um, sooner than later. And I think that's pretty much it. Don't forget that the new time for Wake Up to Make Up, only two times a week. The new um, time is going to be Wednesdays and Fridays only at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. But if there are looks that you would like to see, be sure to... Um, email me at deandragiselle.gmail.com or you can uh, tag me in looks on uh, Instagram and all of that good stuff. So it's Wednesdays and Fridays, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I know with the rest of your weeks, you guys can do so much more, but I had to scale back a little bit because I'm working earlier and earlier and I'm working later and later and it's just really hard to do everything, but I don't want to not do wake up to make up. So I figured if I take down some of the days and you know, we, they can always increase, but for right now, I really need to figure it out. Oh, I miss you guys too um, because you guys wake me up in the morning like it's hard to get up and then when I get up and talk to you guys then I'm all good. So I'm going to rush off and take my son to school. You guys have a great rest of your weekend. I am. I may tune in during the week and show you guys what's going on on uh, the road trip. But you beauties have a great week. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, YouTube, and on Facebook. And Instagram and YouTube will have the final product with hair combed and everything. So you beauties have a great day. Bye, beauties.